I think we will uh, we will start. And uh, again, welcome to uh, this uh, Digimind webinar. Today uh, we will be talking about how social listening can help you with uh, the bank and financial services and insurance industry, and how you can um, detect digital trends. Before um, going into the bulk of this presentation, I will introduce myself. Uh, my name is uh, Olivier. Uh, you can call me Oli. Um, and I'm heading the services here in uh, APAC. I'm based in uh, Singapore uh, for DigiMind. And the Singapore office covers the whole of APAC. <clears throat> I've been with DigiMind uh, very soon, 14 years. Uh, in June, I will turn 14 years. And uh, I've been based in Singapore for almost 10 years. So uh, uh, quite happy to, uh, to be with you today. And uh, um, if you have any questions, of course, you can use the chat, which um, I will explain a little bit later. Um, for today's agenda, I will have a bit of an introduction in terms of um, what is Digimine, in case you don't know uh, the, the, the company. I will also introduce a bit of uh, what is social listening and the methodology that we've applied for this uh, presentation, for this report. Um, I will take you through how we identify trends uh, when we look at big data sets. So this is the second part, the reading through trends through data. Uh, because this is a question that we get quite regularly from our users. Um, and then I will uh, jump into the, the bulk of the presentation, which is the, the BFSI uh, part. There will be a little bit of time at the end of the presentation to discuss uh, the live demo. I will present a couple of uh, examples, very simple, um, for you to get a sense of um, what you can see with social listening. And we'll keep all of the questions for the end for the Q&A. So we'll keep a, a few minutes uh, towards the end of the presentation for that. So I will start with uh, a very uh, quick introduction of Digimine itself, in case you don't already know us. Um, so Digimine, we build solutions to help uh, big organizations make better strategic decisions. We help them with social listening, social analytics, um, and uh, we help consolidate all of the visuals, all of that big data into very simple graphs um, and dashboards. So it's easier for uh, big organizations to uh, uh, identify what's happening out there on the digital space. Digimind has been around for 25 years. So we were created back in 1998. Uh, it's a French company, um, but we have now a footprint across a lot of markets, as you can see. Uh, 13 offices covering pretty much the entire world, about 200 uh, people with, uh, within Digimind, uh, hundreds of uh, clients coming from brands or agencies. What is pretty much uh, social listening? So that's my introduction and the, the methodology part. So um, the first part, which is uh, if you're not already familiar with social listening, um, I will start with a very simple breakdown of uh, what is the different components of social listening. Um, usually when we talk about social listening, people focus very much on the collection part. Uh, what information can you collect? Uh, what are the, um, the different social platforms that you cover? Uh, what is the format of the data that you collect, etc., etc. So it's, of course, it's a key pillar of uh, the social listening uh, capabilities, but it's not the only one, okay? So uh, when you look at uh, a social listening solution, you also need to take into account the qualification of that data. So once you have collected all of this information, how do you qualify it? Uh, is it done automatically? Is it, can it be done manually? Um, is it uh, powered by maybe machine learning, artificial intelligence? Um, <clears throat> what about the sentiment? Um, sentiment is an extremely important component of the qualification of the data because it drives your brand reputation and how you analyze quickly risks on your brand and your stakeholders and your product and the services. So all of these questions, when it comes to the qualification, do not neglect 
that because it will have a big impact later on in terms of how you can activate some business uh, decisions of the back office. Then uh, the third part is the anal analysis and the data visualization. It goes hand in hand, of course. Um, how do you consolidate all of that data? Is it easy for you to create new visuals? Um, <clears throat> So being able to create very simple graphs, dashboards uh, is also very important. And how easily can you share those visuals to the rest of the organization? So this is the distribution part. Um, <clears throat> automated distribution, uh, can you customize it? Um, is there like a limitation in terms of how many, um, how many uh, for example, newsletters or dashboards that you can create, reports that you can create? So distribution part, also extremely important. As we say, if you're not visible, you don't exist, uh, which is very true within big organizations. And uh, the last, but not the least, the integration. Uh, it's usually the, the, the one that we, 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 we forget. <laughs> um, we, we live in a space where there's more and more integration between systems and this will be one of the points i will uh, elaborate on later um, a, a good social listening platform is also able to integrate into your uh, data warehouse or your uh, maybe bi dashboard or internal network uh, whatever you're using for the, uh, the kpis that you need to look at on a regular basis so those five pillars are extremely important Social listening is all of that. <clears throat> okay, so why do we are we looking at trends on social media? Um, I guess I can start with the one in the middle. Um, social media now is the world's biggest focus group. So <clears throat> to put it very simply, uh, from the last studies, and you can see the reference at the bottom of this page, uh, we know that there's more than 3 billion active social media users uh, as of last year. Okay, and all of these users are generating an incredible amount of data, um, unsolicited data, unsolicited reviews and feedback that you know you, you cannot challenge in terms of um, uh, data size. And also the fact that the conventional market research has been evolving. Um, I'm not even going to go into the fact that Traditional market research is more expensive <clears throat> because you need to have the people in front of you creating focus groups, interviews, panel discussions. All of that is quite pricey. Um, and also we know, and again, this is coming from a study from uh, Forrester, uh, less and less people are keen to respond and, and um, a reply to surveys. Uh, the survey response rates are kind of dropping uh, year after year. The consumer advocacy, consumer care, customer care, these two parts are uh, working hand in hand, uh, as you uh, already know. Um, social is a fantastic place to provide support to your customer, um, be it advocacy, be it uh, customer care. And the real-time engagement and also the ease of jumping on your mobile, dropping a couple of messages to your favorite brands, favorite uh, products, uh, and getting an answer almost real-time is uh, unbeatable. All right, okay. So uh, the, the next part is about uh, the social listening or the social intelligence. And um, obviously these two uh, things are quite uh, tightly put together. Um, I, I will start with social listening. So, traditionally, social listening is looking at big volume of data, focusing on social media. Uh, then the software, the platform that you're using is quite uh, crucial. It's a critical point because it will help you to really have the best coverage, all of the features I explained before. Going through the sheer amount of data um, is, is, is a big work, <clears throat> um, but at the same time, you will also realize that out of the big volume of information, you will also see quite a high volume of noise coming from resellers, coming from places that are not necessarily valuable for you. So social listening by definition is big volume, but you will have to um, uh, 
decipher exactly where to look at in that big problem. Social intelligence is when you put social listening and you add some clear objectives, clear goal with a business outcome. Um, to give you an example, I can, I can be thinking about, oh, I want to increase by 10% 10, 10 my sales to uh, the Gen Z. I want my next campaign to be uh, uh, having 10% more comments or in social interactions and my conversion rate will also increase by 5%. So it's usually somewhere um, with key metrics, um, business metrics that you can actually identify. And, um, and then you activate social listening, but not only social listening, different types of data that you will be looking at. Uh, you will be also doing maybe desktop research. You will be taking into account some internal metrics that are maybe coming from your sales team. You will be uh, benchmarking all of these data together so that <clears throat> it kind of helps you identify one piece at a time the big picture and definitely where you want to go when it comes to um, uh, delivering trends and insights you need to have access to your text you need to have access to the content regardless to the uh, nature of the platform that you will be using to collect to do the social listening it shouldn't be a black box, basically. It shouldn't be a black box where you cannot have access to the raw information, the text behind all of the fancy visuals that you will see. Um, the, the key reason for that? Well, because you will need to put your human intelligence to really understand what exactly people are saying. Taking into account the um, irony, uh, sarcasm, taking into account maybe some visuals or emojis or new ways that people find to uh, communicate online. And this, you cannot just rely on the machine for that, okay? Um, the platform itself, social listening platform, extremely important, but <clears throat> the human intelligence will be uh, something that will always be uh, required at the end of the process. The way that people communicate online is uh, changing all the time. Um, also the images, the, the, the visuals that they are using to maybe complain, uh, the sarcasm, uh, the irony, uh, identifying if um, uh, it's a legit person or it, it might be a bot, um, <clears throat> the context, um, the, are they spontaneous or not? So there's a lot of component that you will be able to identify when looking at the text at the content itself. Social intelligence in the, uh, in the context of this presentation is very much related to the trend tracking and identifying trends in the, the digital space. But you can apply social intelligence across a lot of other components. It could be to identify maybe new partners, new potential acquisitions, or uh, M&A. Uh, you might want to look into um, uh, innovations if you're uh, looking at, uh, I don't know, um, something a little bit more uh, tech related. Um, you want maybe to look at how your competitors are developing new products and launching new products in the market. So trend tracking, social intelligence, um, social intelligence is very much applied across a lot of components. Um, we usually put them in, I would say, three main buckets. The trend tracking is one that is quite uh, critical, but we also have the two other components, which are uh, brand reputation, looking at your own reputation, looking at your, the reputation of your product, identifying risk, mapping maybe the risks on you, in your market. Um, that's where, for example, the sentiment analysis is extremely important because <clears throat> the machine will help you to um, uh, select potential uh, pieces of content at risk. And then you can review it, you can make a decision uh, with, of course, your analysis, your experience and background. I'm going to move to the next part of the presentation, which is very much related to the methodology and uh, some of the key figures that we got 
putting together this report. And <clears throat> basically, I will start with <laughs> explaining that um, we have a specific dedicated report that our uh, marketing team, our insights team put together, and uh, you can go online and download it. Uh, it's a more comprehensive report. There's five digital trends um, in this report. Uh, today, I'm presenting uh, two or three trends. And uh, please don't hesitate to go online and, and check it out and download it. It's a free report, of course. Um, so <clears throat> the, the methodology behind this report and then this webinar is that we, of course, focused on the, the banking, financial services, and insurance space. Uh, you see an example of um, how we, we were running some searches, getting the, um, the data onto our platform. Um, we are using a set of keywords put together so that it, it kind of comes up as a, as a query. And uh, we were looking at uh, last year's data, so uh, 2022. I think we stopped in, uh, at the end of uh, November 2022. Um, and we were, of course, uh, using our own platform for this and uh, covering key markets in Asia. So, uh, we focused on Singapore, Philippines, Indonesia, and Malaysia. Uh, the volume of data collected varies, of course, um, based on the total population of that country, but also based on how many social media uh, active users you have in that country. And uh, when we moved into the, uh, uh, the analysis of all of that information, uh, we started putting together like typically trend lines, um, being able to identify when there's uh, peaks or drops in the volume of information uh, benchmarking as well uh, what is related to banking versus what is related to the financial services and the insurance. So <clears throat> uh, when uh, we looked at all of that information, and just to give you a couple of key figures associated with uh, these uh, millions of pieces of uh, data, um, we, we identified that 60% of the banks uh, reported an impact on the, the planned investment in customer engagement applications. So meaning anything related to chat, uh, chatbot, uh, customer interface, and that's a pretty big increase in terms of uh, investment. Um, but at the same time, uh, only 30% of um, the largest insurers have really gone through the, the, the digital transformation. So uh, they haven't really truly digitized the value chain. So <clears throat> very interesting thing that there's been a lot of investments and we see that they are not yet at the, uh, at the level where they feel they have gone through the digital transformation already. Some examples of how we identify trends and how we identify uh, key insights when you have to look through millions of pieces of content. A very simple and easy entry point is the list of hashtags. Automatically, the platform will provide you with all of the different hashtags associated with the information that you've selected. <clears throat> extremely simple way to identify um, what are the hashtags that the consumers are using so that you can potentially reuse that in your content strategy. Uh, you can prepare uh, your, um, yeah, your strat, uh, strategy moving forward, taking into account those, uh, those hashtags. Another important point is, for example, where uh, people are discussing extremely valuable to identify if the discussions are more in uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, forums, TikTok. Um, obviously, you must be able to um, collect information from all of these different channels, but uh, um, be, being able to identify the key ones are extremely critical because then you know this is where you need to put your money and, and um, especially if, for example, you're doing influencer marketing. Uh, in the BFSI industry, uh, we've seen that more and more uh, relying, relying on uh, industry experts and influencers to, uh, to help promote your, uh, your product and services. And for example, in 2022, we collected about uh, more than 600 millions of 
uh, tweets, um, about 20 million of Facebook posts, 16 million were um, coming from the news. Of course, the, the BFSI industry is well covered by the, the news, uh, newspapers and online, um, on, on online media. Uh, and only seven, seven millions from for Instagram. So here, a very quick analysis of the ventilation of your um, uh, the, the voice of your customers is definitely coming from Twitter and Facebook. The share of voice of uh, the topic. So this is the traditional share of voice, um, not the competitive share of voice, but the um, BFSI share of voice or so the industry share of voice, basically. And uh, typically, you can benchmark that with uh, your own share of voice. If you're a brand, uh, you're collecting um, information related to your brand, you might want to check if it is following the same breakdown as uh, this, this industry share of voice. Another very, very useful entry point is um, the timeline, um, the peaks and the drops in the volume of information that you're looking at. Um, very easily, uh, the platform will uh, show you uh, where this is going up, where this is going down, uh, help you deep dive into those uh, peaks and drops. Um, and typically, when I was uh, sharing earlier that uh, we have an integration with ChatGPT, uh, this is where we uh, activate it, for example. Uh, when you have a peak and let's say August 2022, I want to know what happened on that particular month, uh, but it could be a week, it could be uh, just a one day. Uh, you will be able to deep dive into that peak and ask ChatGPT to get you a summary of the key, uh, the, the, the key outcome. Very, very useful because then you don't have to go through all of that information by yourself manually. Um, ChatGPT will come up with a summary. So another entry point for the detection of trends Looking at big volume of data, the traditional world cloud. So um, if you identify um, some of these key um, uh, concepts, uh, you will be able to identify what is the key discussion behind it. And we also have different types of world clouds. Uh, the one that is generated off the back of the text itself, the one that is generated off the bio of the users online. So this one, for example, is a world cloud associated with the bio of your um, netizen. So people putting con con content online, tweeting, uh, putting uh, Facebook posts. We will be also looking at the bio of that person, see how maybe they describe themselves uh, for the profession, or the, the, the text associated with it. <clears throat> and we put it into a, a world cloud for you to really quickly that, oh, understand a lot of people are like writers, uh, oh, retired, um, and uh, which also correlates with additional metrics that uh, you can be looking at, such as the demographics. Uh, retired, uh, yes, you can see that we have uh, a, an age breakdown available. And you can see that this is very much leaning towards the uh, older generations, so 55 and plus. So very interesting because that will help you do uh, the mapping of your consumers and um, not, not necessarily going into the, the, the idea of uh, creating profiles and personas, but that's also something that we, we, we provide from time to time when we want to um, clearly see the different types of consumers that you have. Okay, um, so, and the last part, as I've shared before, is to look into the actual insights, the actual data and content. So who is speaking um, and uh, the actual text, um, different types of lingo, um, you can see, uh, ugh, can't wait for uh, decentralized finance to be mainstream. It's beep annoying to, have the, to go to the bank to open, a, open up an account and so on and so on. 
uh, a mix of English uh, and uh, Bahasa, uh, I believe. Um, and also, not only will you see uh, consumers complaining, uh, but you might also find some uh, pieces of the solutions. Um, it could be coming from official uh, journals, uh, specialized places, or influencers, or even consumers, but they, 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 there's usually the two aspects online, the, the problem and the solution. Usually, we focus on the problem, um, and <laughs> we, we should also not forget that the solution is most likely also online. Um, so, yeah, Malaysia introduces digital account opening uh, to reduce onboarding time by 60%. Uh, very interesting uh, piece of feedback. Uh, obviously, when you have something like that, this is the first step, and you will have to dive into it. You will have to investigate a little bit into this uh, content to identify exactly what sort of solution we are looking at. Um, okay, all right, let me move now to the next part of this presentation, which is very much <clears throat> the, the BFSI brands, um, sorry, the BFSI trends that we've identified. So using all of the methodology that I've explained just now, um, identifying the, the, the content, the volume of information covering four markets uh, for last year, um, uh, what sort of trends have we identified? So the first, um, the first thing is that we were also playing with the volume of information, not necessarily just for 11 months, but uh, we can go back two years. So sometimes we were like, uh, maybe 2022, uh, we might want to check if 2022 trend is aligned with 2021. So typically, what would something happen in 2021 that was confirmed in 2022 or was it really coming up uh, out of the blue in 2022 so this uh, graph is just to illustrate um, that we were playing with all of that uh, obviously the analysis of the data was focusing on 2022 but um yeah we we we, we used also 2021 sometimes to see if uh, the, the covid 19 impact had an effect in uh, how we analyze the data. Uh, okay, not, not going to go too, too much into the details of that, but <clears throat> okay, first one which I obviously like and is aligned with uh, what we were discussing, the digital first approach is king uh, as we know it, and how we translate it and how we identified it into the data is that uh, there were pretty much two key components coming out. Um, Application programming interface was something that was more and more put on the table within the discussions. Um, so, the, especially in the fintech space, uh, but not only, uh, also in the insurtech, and, and uh, all of the technical discussions were definitely coming up more and more. Uh, the reason is that it's quite hard to uh, function and work as a standalone. Uh, system and a standalone operation. You most likely have to integrate within a lot of other applications and systems online. Uh, be it for, <coughs> sorry, for your payment gateway, be it for uh, retrieving your customers' profiles, be it for um, a lot of different touch points. So all of these different things should be seamless not so seamless <laughs> for some organizations. And um, funny enough, we have identified that application programming interface, so API, is becoming more and more mainstream. People know more and more what API means and almost pointing out to companies, hey guys, you need to develop your API so you can, you can connect with this service and I don't have to do it again and go through like, five times the same form, um, be it online or even like over the counter, to get to uh, opening a bank account. So extremely interesting that this is getting more and more into the, the mainstream discussions. And obviously, uh, the online bank account opening 
Um, with the COVID happening uh, over the last few years, uh, people tend to stay <laughs> at home and they want more and more online services and uh, opening a bank account shouldn't be, uh, you can see the, 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 the tweet on the left hand side, um, stop making a skew for banking services. Um, very interesting, uh, very interesting feedback. So all these two, it, it comes hand in hand because um, <clears throat> it, it's very tech related. Another uh, digital trend that we've identified is um, uh, associated with chatbots and virtual assistants. Uh, people are also aware that <clears throat> there are more and more AI, uh, chat GPT again is a very good example of how quickly <clears throat> there was an explosion of um, discussions associated with the, the capabilities of chat GPT. Um, and, um, but still, <laughs> still, your customers will identify and they will, they will sense it, they will feel it if you're not authentic in your customer interactions. Mm. So, um, and that, that leads to, uh, you, you can see some of the, the feedback on the left hand side, uh, waiting on the hotline for the past 15 minutes, the, try, the, try the chat bot, but uh, no good, um, and so on and so on. So don't, um, don't, don't ne neglect, of course, the, the customer uh, support, customer care, uh, or uh, take a shortcut with activating um, AI chat bots and virtual assistants because it requires most likely a, a, a more thoughtful process. Uh, we've, we've listed some of the pros and cons, of course, that um, we have identified associated with these uh, chatbots and virtual assistants. And uh, I'm also mindful of the, the time. Um, the last one, which is uh, definitely associated with the, the last two. The, when I said that people are getting more and more tech savvy when it comes to finance, insurance, and uh, yeah, banking services. Um, the um, uh, central bank digital uh, currency uh, topic was also uh, discussed more and more. Um, typically, for example, in Singapore, we know that there, there is a fairly strong scene of um, uh, crypto enthusiast uh, and the CBDC is definitely very closely related to the cryptocurrencies. Uh, you can see uh, on the, the tweet at the bottom, uh, I, they want to create a CBDC to combat hashtag Bitcoin. Uh, but it also comes with um, uh, users and consumers wanting to be more and more in control of their finance. And, um, and also kind of trying to, I wouldn't say fight back uh, the banks, but getting more autonomy, uh, to put it very simply. Um, so we've identified some of the key uh, pros, key arguments uh, associated with CBDC. Uh, the peer-to-peer -peer transaction is definitely the, 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 the key component. Um, uh, when people are using cryptocurrencies, they basically don't have to go through a, a banking system. Uh, they, they just transfer money or crypto, crypto money from one person to another. Uh, but there's there's also some uh, some additional points associated with the CBDC, the, the payment security, which is uh, the whole point of the CBDC to put a framework, a, a legal framework, on top of the, the cryptocurrencies uh, uh, transfers. Um, okay, so I will uh, I will stop here for the, the slides. I will move now into. Um, the last part using one of our modules that is called historical search. Uh, it's, it's in the title. So you just put uh, like keywords or wh whatever you want in the search bar and the platform will give you uh, all of the data associated with it. Um, <clears throat> you will uh, very easily be able to toggle between like the last month, three months, six months, up to two years of data. So that uh, basically you can really select exactly what, uh, uh, what what is the time window you want to look at, and um, if you want to be very uh, 
explicit in terms of uh, a specific uh, time range, you can also put it uh, at, at the uh, time selection panel. Uh, hold on, let me maybe, oh, okay, no, that's fine. Um, so typically, um, the, the, the key component is the search bar. Um, if I put banks, I will get, I don't know, like 17 million uh, pieces of content back. And you can see that there, there was a, a spike uh, beginning middle of March. I can go into that information, very quickly identify uh, what exactly was the problem uh, of the discussion at that moment. Uh, and, and really going through all of that information. Um, <clears throat> the left-hand side panel will also give you access to all of the different entry points I've shared before. So this one is the timeline in terms of volume of information. But if you want to look at, uh, give me the key concepts and give me the world cloud associated with uh, the, the, the data set I've selected, um, just show me that and say, oh yeah, that was the Silicon Valley bank going bankrupt and uh, that, that, okay, fine, I know, uh, okay, let's move on. Uh, or maybe I want to just uh, refocus on uh, the last 30 days. Um, the top hashtags, as I shared, looking through all of the hashtags and identifying, oh, this one, oh, this, this is a good hashtag and it has been trending up, for example, maybe I, I should be using it now. Um, and all of that you can export very easily, uh, image or Excel um, document. Uh, the world map, uh, typically identifying where is the data coming from and say, oh, actually, you know what, I don't want all of that information from the US. Let me filter it down to, uh, I see maybe the Philippines, uh, because I, I want to focus on the Philippines market. I will go back to my uh, key concepts and see exactly what people have been discussing associated with banks over the last 30 days in the Philippines only. And same process, you click, you deep dive into the information. <clears throat> um, some of these um, graphs, as I said, very, very straightforward. Uh, I'm gonna jump all the way down to the sentiment uh, because this is a very important part of uh, social listening. Being able to identify if something is negative or positive is critical when it comes to protecting yourself, protecting your brand, your reputation, your, your key stakeholders, um, and um, to share a, a very simple fact, um, I would say 90% of the project that we activate have a brand protection, a brand reputation component. This is the first step going into digital, you want to protect yourself. So identification of what's negative, and again, you, you can easily dive into uh, the positive, the negative, uh, the neutral, whatever. So uh, all of that information available through a simple click, and also the way that people are using emojis, the visuals I was sharing earlier with, uh, with you. Um, some of these emojis might be quite relevant <clears throat> to also add into your content uh, planning. Um, last but not least, mentions, which is access to all of the raw information that you want to look at uh, for your uh, analysis. All right, so if I uh, pretty much run the same idea with different, um, uh, let's say uh, I'm looking at banks uh, in the Philippines, but I can also do some benchmarks. Um, uh, so let's say um, I want to have a benchmark between what people say about banks and what people say about CBDC and see if these two things correlate, yes or no. Um, <clears throat> or even doing some like, do people say banks or do people say banking? So there's a lot of different ways that you can use that platform to identify if there are some correlations, if there are some um, synergies between the different topics that you want to look at. Of course, up to you to put the names of your different competitors over there and yourself, and that will give you the share of voice. So that's the usual way of using this graph is by doing a competitive analysis. 
<clears throat> but um, that's uh, uh, th there's a lot of flexibility in terms of what you can do here. Um, the other thing I want to highlight is that um, the platform actually accepts a lot of different uh, variations of the keywords uh, with additional um, operators so that you can really put that all together and make it very, very explicit, very, very um, uh, comprehensive. So I'll give you an idea. Uh, I don't know if people will say banks or banking or just like bank, whatever. Um, I can just use some of these ad advanced uh, operators. Um, another example is I don't want the food bank. I don't care about food bank. So is it going to impact my volume of data? Uh, let's check it out. Uh, I was on 8 million, <clears throat> I'm still on 8 million. Okay, so when people say bank, it's usually the, the, the usual financial banking system. Okay, all right. Um, I think that's it. That's it for the, the live demo. As I said, very, very simple, easy uh, presentation. Not going to go into all of the different features. Uh, I want to keep the last 10 minutes for any questions that you may have put in the chat so let me open up i will stop sharing my screen and open up um open up the the chat bar. okay i see there's one question um what are some of the key metrics that bfsi brands should track when using social listening this is uh, a very 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 good question so i would say <clears throat> Let's start with the basics. <clears throat> I will recommend the share of voice of your organization versus the key competitors. I will recommend the tracking of your campaign performance. So how you translate campaign performance into uh, social media listening metrics is that volume of information that you uh, have generated yourself versus generated by the consumers so this is what we call the owned earned split um, that gives you an idea of not just the overall volume of information that you see online associated with your campaign but how much you had to create versus how much was created by your consumers um, because it's otherwise it's a bit too easy to say i'm gonna spam so much content that my online content associated with the campaign will be extremely high but if it's coming 90 percent from you it doesn't have much value what you want is to have your consumers responding to this campaign um <clears throat> the and doing the same for the competitors or yourself past campaigns one point I always introduce when we look at um, performance is you need to benchmark it with something. You need a reference. You need uh, a point that will help you to say this is better, this is uh, below. Uh, so either you compare your own performance with competitors or you compare your uh, current campaign with past campaigns. Maybe you're, you're, you're doing seasonal campaigns every year. So you might have the data from the past years. Um, use it. Uh, so you can actually say side by side, the same campaign, 2021, 2022, 2023. These are the different uh, KPIs. Um, and we can extend it. Um, sentiment, the evolution of the sentiment, um, again, volume of information that you see online associated with your campaign you want the highest but you don't want the highest if it's all negative so you need to add, add the understanding of the sentiment breakdown to your campaign performance um, so these different things i would say these are the the, the key uh, starting point metrics and you can put on top of that the, the usual share of voice for the brands or for some of the products, the, the services or the stakeholders uh, to help you have uh, a clear view on where you stand. 
another question is how can they use this data to inform their marketing strategies? That's very good. Okay, so <clears throat> we usually first discuss what is the actual situation, the current situation in your organization and how people are receiving um, these metrics at the moment. Do they receive anything, yes or no? Um, do they know how to read it? Trust me, it's not a stupid question. Uh, <clears throat> when you start disseminating information coming from social media to the rest of the organization, some readers, some recipients might not be very uh, aware of how to look at social media metrics. So um, we usually discuss what is the uh, adoption plan, how, how do we roll out those deliverables. We might want to start with very basic uh, starting point, uh, which is usually just sharing the content itself, saying, oh, hey, this happened, or I, I, this is the, a tweet I, I, I noticed, maybe you want to you wanna look, look at it. Oh, this is a Facebook post, so very good po positive feedback on this product, this feature, I'm going to share with the, the innovation team or the, uh, um, the uh, research and development guys. Um, mm -hmm. But the more you uh, look at uh, like those KPIs, metrics, owned, earned, split, you might not want to share those metrics straight away with the, the entire organization. So um, automatically, you can disseminate this uh, from the platform using automated dashboards, um, downloading reports, adding your own analysis, uh, activation of newsletters that you can customize uh, specific to one department at a time. Uh, we, I usually recommend to be quite mindful of not too much data. You don't want to uh, take 8 million pieces of content and just push it <laughs> to, to everyone in the organization. This is not going to work. Um, and uh, yeah, so um, uh, size, how you package the data, the, the insights, the information that you will share with the, the different teams. Uh, it's not a one for all also. So it's additional work for you, but it's uh, something that you can uh, uh, you have to customize. And uh, something else I like to put is uh, uh, market yourself or brand yourself. <clears throat> uh, more and more I've seen, <clears throat> sorry, um, internal projects where there is a specific name for this kind of um, reports. Oh, this is the, uh, the insider or the social insider uh, newsletter. <clears throat> Don't hesitate to, to use that because it helps for people to remember, oh, yeah, this is the social insider. Oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. So um, as, as a very, very um, listening campaign, we know that uh, in terms of metrics, in terms of uh, response rates, engagement rates, as soon as you have uh, a contest and you can win whatever, a voucher, you can win a prize, you can win something, these are the top posts. Okay, so this is where you get most of the engagement, most of the, the, the consumer um, uh, engagement. So in terms of successful campaign, that, yeah, you, 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 you might want to consider that. <clears throat> uh, what are some best practices for conducting social listening in the BFSI sector? So uh, I guess what I've uh, shared just now, um, <clears throat> when we discuss our, uh, the project, we um, we try to identify what will be the met methodology that we will activate. To put it very simply, we have two big methodologies that uh, is called uh, looking at the big data <clears throat> or looking at the smart data. The big data will be when exactly what I've presented. You use very generic terms: banks, banking, uh, financial services, and you get a lot of information back, 8 million pieces of content over the last month. So the data collection is quite easy, but the analysis will be more tricky because you need to decipher, you need to go through all of that and make sure that it's, uh, it's, it's something that you can identify and use. Uh, <clears throat> this one is the big data. Smart data is when we target specific places online where 
it could be influencers in your industry talking, it could be um, Facebook groups where uh, people are discussing openly uh, a specific subject, it could be Facebook pages, Insta, TikTok, and so on. And we collect, so we connect all of these pages into the system and we collect everything that they post. <clears throat> the, the logic is quite simple. We are very close to relevant data. So we know that you don't need to apply any filter, you can collect everything, which is giving you, I would say, the true voice of these consumers. But it requires a bit more work for the activation. So it's exactly the same as the quantitative approach and the qualitative approach. And we can activate these two, and eventually it gives you the, 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 the two pictures, small focused uh, picture and the big picture giving you a lot of data. And then up to you to actually decide if you want to look at this one or this one or combine together. Um, this basically would be, I would say, the, 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 the starting point. And then we, we, we elaborate based on all of the different strategies and, and KPIs that you want to activate. I see that we have, um, uh, okay, it's, uh, it's one hour sharp. Uh, so do remember you can download this uh, uh, fantastic digital, digital trends uh, for the BFSI uh, industry uh, online. It's free, uh, QR code, you can uh, just scan it and uh, download it. Um, very happy to have uh, been with, uh, with you today, guys. And uh, I believe this is being recorded. We'll share the recording. And uh, don't hesitate to contact me. If you have any questions, you can just uh, push an email uh, to me. I would be happy to uh, follow up on that. Thank you so much. You have a fantastic day. And um, yeah, I uh, hope to uh, <laughs> see you soon in my mailbox. <laughs> <laughs>